welcome everyone to our course. Today we have 6th week first module lecture. We already have started with third generation solar cell. So far we discussed with you about disensitized solar cell and organic solar cell. Today we will talk about a one very interesting type of solar cell namely perovskite solar cell. So, the perovskite solar cell that uh, during the last 10 years it caught the attention of the scientific community as its efficiency increased all of a sudden from a very decent number to a very high number. And this material possesses some of the properties like tunable band gap, high absorption coefficient. Because of all of this excellent photophysical properties, this material is suitable not only for solar cell, but also for light emitting diode, for fabricating photodiodes, for photodetectors as well as different kind of lasers. But today we will discuss about the perovskite based solar cells only. If you look this graph, this figure which is actually a subset of the in real big efficiency graph. So, you can see that we are comparing the efficiency versus year for different generations of the solar cell. Now, MR for a silicon solar cell the growth is almost constant. Disensitized solar cell the efficiency starting from 10 to 11 percent it remains almost constant and there is a sudden little bit increase here only. Organic photovoltaics a steady increase is happening and this have been led by the discovery of the new materials. Whereas, the perovskite material if we look at the growth phase it is the very very steep. So, that is why the efficiency started with a very moderate number somewhat around 3.8 percent it rose to almost about like 15 to 8 percent in a time period which started from 2008 to 2000. 16. So, only in 5 to 6 years of research the efficiency has increased significantly and this number increasing day by day. For example, today the efficiency of a perovskite solar cell is 22 percent. So, from 3.8 percent in 2009, 15.9 percent in 2014. So, only 5 years of research, but efficiency enhancement is huge. That is why and even like the efficiency sometimes is comparable to the silicon solar cell efficiency. That is why this material has caught the attention of scientific community and lot of people who were working on the sensitizer based solar cell have started working on perovskite based solar cell. But what is this perovskite or what is the name perovskite stands for? Perovskite was first discovered in the Ural mountains of Russia by Gustav Rose in 1839. So, it was named after the Russian mineralogist Lew Perovsky. So, you can see that from this word Perovsky the structure name came as a perovskite. It is found in the earth's mantle and the family of perovskite material adopt the chemical formula ABX3. So, all those crystal structures or all those materials which have a crystal structure of ABX3, they are called perovskite crystal structure. Here your A is an organic or an inorganic cation, B is your heavy metal. and X is the halogen like chlorine, bromine, iodine etcetera. So, when you have that uh, organic compound as a A cation along with the heavy metal and halogen then we have an organic inorganic hybrid perovskite. When we have an inorganic cation as a A cation along with the heavy metal and the halogen then we have all inorganic perovskite. Now, one of the very very commonly studied inorganic perovskite is barium titanate which we often write as BATIO3. For example, calcium titanate is also widely studied. These are the two perovskite material which have been studied extensively for its ferroelectric properties and different kind of ferroelectric based material has been fabricated using these two perovskite structure. 
But later on, people have found that by suitable substitution of the organic cation and changing the structure, we can always fabricate the perovskite structure with a tunable band gap. And once it was realized, then the application of the perovskite in the optoelectronics field has started. Now, historically, oxide based perovskite have been the most actively studied of perovskite family as a result of their superior ferroelectric, magnetic and superconductive properties. So, in the earlier days when superconductivity was in the zenith of its time, there are a lot of varieties of the perovskite materials have been studied for the investigation of the room temperature superconductivity. So, that is why whenever previously we talk about perovskite, we usually mean a material which have a very good ferroelectric, magnetic and superconducting properties. The first halide based perovskite structure was observed in cesium lead halide CSPB X3, cesium CS lead and X3 where X stands for the different halogen compounds by Moller in 1958. The first appearance of the organic MA in halide perovskite was seen by Webster or Weber et al. in 1978. Now, why there are so many research? If you look at the number of research papers in this field, it has been exponentially increasing over the last decades. Obviously, this material provides us some of the advantage over the conventional inorganic materials. So, some of the superiorities of the perovskite solar cells are the following. First of all, the efficiency is high, it is almost as I said 22 percent and this number is increasing day by day. With an efficiency of 15.9 percent only after 5 years of research. Now, this data of 15.9 percent is a 2015 data and this is for an indication like starting from 2009 to 2015 or 16, this 4 5 years of research, efficiency increased from 3.8 percent to 15.9 percent. But the today's data is 22 percent and it is increasing every day. Facile low temperature solution based fabrication method. So, we can fabricate the perovskite in a solution based approach as well as a vapor based approach. And whenever we process the solution based perovskite, we can even do the sintering or heating of the film at a low temperature. Now, what is the advantage for that? The advantage is that we can fabricate this kind of devices on a flexible printable substrate. So, nowadays this flexible or printable large LER roll to roll perovskite modules are coming into the market and that has been only been possible because in this kind of material, we can do a low temperature solution based processing technique. This material has a very high absorption coefficient. So, in a small, in a small thickness, they can absorb lot amount of light. Higher stability in air, very high values of open circuit voltage VOC, almost around 1.1 electron volt typically we obtain in this kind of solar cell. High diffusion length and high charge carrier mobilities. So, if the diffusion length is high as well as the charge carrier mobilities is high, then the electrons and hole can travel the suitable distance to the electrode before they recombine. That is the optimum properties we look for for designing high efficiency solar cell. It means that the light generated electrons and holes can move large enough distance to be extracted as current instead of losing their energy as heat within the cell. So, because of this advantage, perovskite picked up the research interest of many people. Now, some general description of the crystal structure of this material are the following. Usually, this kind of material has a stoichiometry of A m x 3 and these are single perovskite. We also have double perovskite structure. So, where A as I said, this is can be an organic or inorganic cation. When I say as an organic cation, for example, CH3, NH3 or CH3, NH2 or it can be CH3, CH2, NH2. So, we can use an organic group or even we can use an inorganic group like cesium. M is a metal cation. So, we can use lead, 
as a metal cation or we can use bismuth as a metal cation, but commonly lead is very very extensively used. And X is the halogen that is chlorine, bromine or iodine or a combination of chlorine, bromine and iodine. X is an oxide or halide anion such as chlorine, bromine and iodine. M refers to a metal cation with a coordination number of 6. You cannot pick up any metal, those metal which has a coordination number of 6, they usually substituted in this kind of structure. The MXC octahedra share corners and A is usually a large cation that fills the cubo octahedral holes with coordination number of 12. A can be calcium, potassium, sodium, lead, strontium and other rare metals. This is a typical crystal structure of a perovskite material where you can see the M is lying at the center, A is at the corner and the face center is occupied by the halogen atoms. So, the octahedra has been equally shared by each of this unit cell when surrounded in a three dimensional volume. So, even if I look here, so this kind of octahedra they are coordinated with each other to make a giant cubo octahedral geometry. <coughs> and the metal cations sits at the center of this cube, cubo octahedral geometry. A cations can be organic and inorganic like cesium or CH3NH2 methyl ammonium. The B metal cation sites in hybrid perovskites are occupied by the group fourth metals in divalent oxide states like lead, tin, germanium. The halide ions has been the most effectively component in hybrid perovskite, seventh group in perovskite like chlorine, bromine, iodine with oxidation state of 1. Crystal symmetry is the ideal case of for perovskite corresponding to a PM3M space group with 12 fold coordination number of the A cation, 6 fold coordination of the B cation and the corner residing BX6 octahedra, we get this cubo octahedral geometry which is shown in this figure. Now, when we synthesize or when we make this perovskite material, one important parameters we look for it is called the tolerance factor. This constant T also known as the tolerance factor and can be used as a measure of the degree of distortion of a perovskite from ideal QB. Now, if you look back to the earlier structure, if I go back to the earlier slide, you see that in the left hand side, we have an ideal cubic structure, but the right hand side is not an ideal cubic. So, there is a distortion from an ideal crystal structure to the perovskite structure. Now, this distortions quantitatively represented by the tolerance factor and the definition of the tolerance factor is T is equal to R A plus R O divided by square root of 2 R B plus R O. In general, cubic structure occurs for the values of T between 0 0.89 and 1 and for oxide perovskite, the T value is between 0.85 to 1.11 for halide perovskites. Now, here R A is the radius of your A cation, R B is the radius of your B cation and O is the radius of the O anion. So, when the values of T is between 0 0.89 and 1, it gives a cubic structure. When the values of the T is between 0 0.85 and 1.11 for halide perovskites, it gives a oxide peros, it gives a perovskite structure. So, once we fabricate a perovskite structure, usually from the stoichiometry ratio, we look for the tolerance factor and the tolerance factor has to be satisfied to get a required perovskite structure. You can see in this picture, the tilting of the BXC octahedra occurring from non-ideal size effects and other factors inducing strain on the BXC bonds. For the orthorhombic structure, octahedral tilt about the B and 6 axis. So, if it is an orthorhombic structure, then this octahedra, this octahedra, they tilt around the B and C axis as you can see here. So, here this is a perfectly cubic structure, but when there is a tilt happens, so you get an orthorhombic structure and this tilt, if you consider this is as A axis and this as your B axis and the C axis is along the perpendicular to the plane of the paper, then when we have a twisting or rotation 
around the B and C axis, then the this cubital structure get twisted and you get a orthorhombic structure like that. So, uh, for example, if you define a cube like this, uh, this is not an ideal cube because the length of the cube should be equal. Let us consider that the length is all equal here. Now, if this is one of the axis and if this is one of the axis and if this is one of the axis, and let us say this is your x axis, this is your y axis and z axis. Now, keeping x fixed, if I rotate this cube with respect to y as well as z direction, so I will induce a strain on the crystal structure and the resultant geometry you will get is the orthorhombic structure. Okay? So, orthorhombic structure has a less symmetry than the cubic structure. First three dimensional organic inorganic hybrid perovskite discovered by replacing cesium in CSPB X3 with methyl ammonium cations CH3 NH3 plus. So, the first example of the organic inorganic cation and which is still used very very progressively and commonly is the MA based perovskite structure where MA or methyl ammonium is CH3 NH3 plus and it was discovered by Weber in 1978. CH3 NH3 lead iodide is the most commonly used materials for making high efficiency perovskite solar cell and there are lot of study on this material. Later on people have done different variations of this structure. They have replaced this CH3 NH3 with CH3 NH3 NH2 lead iodide. 3 Some people have keep this thing as the same but replace lead with bismuth or tin or germanium. Some people have replaced this iodine with chlorine bromine or a combination of iodine and chlorine, iodine and bromine or chlorine and bromine. These are called mixed halide perovskites. But still CH3 NH3 lead iodide is the most widely and most extensively studied halide perovskite structure. CH3 NH3 lead iodide is a semiconducting pigment with a direct band gap of 1.55 electron volt. So, CH3 NH3 lead iodide is a light absorbing material which has a direct band gap of 1.5 electron volt and its absorption coefficient is also very high as high as 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 5 per centimeter. So, this is almost comparable to an inorganic materials. So, because of this high absorption coefficient the light absorptions can happen even in a smaller thickness. We even do not need a micron size thick film like an inorganic semiconductor to make a suitable device out of this material. Let us take a look at the structure of this CH3 NH3 lead iodide where you can see here again we have done this orthorhombic crystal structure and in the center there is a big M A cation which is CH3 NH3 plus and these are the halides chlorine, bromine or iodine and these are the this yellow colors circular balls they are the leads pb2 plus ions and you can see that ma is bigger another important thing to mention in this perspective is that here in addition to the electronic nature there is an ionic contribution is also happening now it has been proposed that this ma cations that percolate or diffuse or migrate in this crystal structure when light falls on it. This phenomena is commonly known as ion migration. Now, because of this ion migration, although there are some debate over it, but this is quite an accepted theory nowadays. Now, when you have a three dimensional structure of this perovskite material, now this uh, organic cations or MA cations, they start to migrate along the crystal structure. And because of that, because of this ion migration, the photostability of the perovskite structure is very, very poor. So, what does it mean is that if I fabricate a high efficiency perovskite solar cell of 20 percent efficiency in a control environment. So, by control environment I mean where we can control the humidity level and we can control the oxygen level. In this control environment for example, in a globe box, if we can fabricate a perovskite device with an efficiency of 15 percent. Now, if I bring this device in an ambient condition and exposed to the light, because of this ion migration, 
the 3D structures spontaneously disintegrate to a 2D structure. So, now we do not have the required perovskite crystal structure which was responsible for the light absorption that is why the short circuit current dramatically increase dramatically decrease and the device become photodegradable. Here we are showing like you know how the methyl ammonium cation looks like here you see that there is a H carbon and nitrogen. Now, one of this if the this theory is true or if, if we believe this theory like you know the ion migrates over the crystal structure when the light falls on it. Then the next question is that if I want to increase the stability of these devices. So, I need to arrest this ion migration or I need to stop the ion migration. So, how can I do it? So, one possible solution as you can see from this figure if this is the if this the big red ball is responsible for disintegrating the structure if I make it more bulky if I make it larger like this much size. So, because of the steric hindrance then this large bulky balls will not be able to move around the structure. So, that is exactly achieved if we replace this CH 3 NH 3 plus this MA cations with a longer chain cations for example, CH 3 NH 2 NH 3 plus or CH 3 CH 2 NH 2 plus it is called formaldehydes. Similar way there are gadolinium. So, there are long chains alkyl groups or the larger cations one can replace, but there is a limit for that provided it satisfy the tolerance factor one can make this kind of ion migration as small as possible. Similarly, people have been tried to replace this halide anion like for chlorine instead of a chlorine they mix a mixture of the two anions like chlorine and bromine or chlorine or iodine or bromine or iodine and this is called mixed halide perovskite. And this approach where one can play around with the different cationic sites as well as different anionic sites to enhance the stability of the perovskite structure is called compositional mapping. In a compositional mapping we keep the tolerance factor in the mind so that the perovskite structure is still retained, but we change the organic sites we permute the organic sites as well as we permute the anionic sites so that the ion migration can be hindered or stopped. So, because of that the intrinsic photo instability of the device can be enhanced or the intrinsic photo stability of the device can be enhanced. Organic inorganic perovskite the unit cell parameter a increased from 5.68 to 5.92 and to 6.27 angstrom as the size of the halide increased from chlorine bromine to iodine. So, if you change from chlorine to bromine to iodine, so what happens the unit cell parameters change from 5.68 to 5.92 to 6.27 angstrom. So, the unit cell become larger and larger. The larger side and the aspherical shape of MA cause distortion in the network and drives several phase transition by decreasing T. So, uh, this perovskite structure shows a temperature dependent crystal structure. If you change the temperature. So, what will happen due to the larger size of this anions and as well as larger size of and the aspherical shape of this MA cations there is a distortion in the crystal network. And because of the distortions if the thermodynamic equilibrium is distorted by changing the temperature then different kind of crystal phase can be obtained. For example, for T less than 160 Kelvin we get an orthorhombic crystal structure. Whereas, for a temperature 162 to 327 Kelvin the room temperature we get a tetragonal crystal structure and at a high temperature T greater than 327 Kelvin we get a cubic structure. So, same material, but we get three different crystal structure for three different temperature. One is tetragonal structure at room temperature at low temperature orthorhombic structure at high temperature cubic structure. Why there are three different structure crystal structure from the same material? because of the large shape and the aspherical shape of the MA they cause a distortion in the crystal geometry. And this distortions actually is responsible for the phase transitions when the temperature change is induced. So, now depending upon what particular kind of crystal structures we are looking for in our practical applications 
we can tune the temperature to get that the desired crystal structure. For example, let us let us take a look at this organic inorganic perovskite crystal structure. Here we have colored the different sites. As you can see, this iodine is here, right? And lead is kind of the big one, and the carbon this is here. This is a representative image which have been taken from one of the paper which was published by Physical Review B. You can read that paper journal to get a more idea on it. Now, as we mentioned in the beginning, one of the advantage of the perovskite material is the band gap tuning. Band gap tuning is required to extend the absorption to longer wavelengths without sacrificing the absorption coefficient. So, consider how good it will be, let us say I have a material where the absorption coefficient remains the same even in UV range and visible range and in near IR range. Perovskite provides that opportunity. Changing any of the A, M and X in the A, M, X 3 change the band gap. So, either changing A cation or by changing M or by changing X you can change the band gap. Why? Because once you change these things basically you change the tolerance factor T. If the tolerance factor is changed then there is a distortion in the crystal structure and wherever there will be a distortion in the crystal structure there will be different kind of crystal geometry and that leads to the different kinds of band gap. For example, the band gap can be tuned between 1.55 electron volt and 1.17 electron volt by varying the ratio of lead to tin. So, if we go in the M cation, if we replace the M from lead to the tin. So, if the M is lead to tin, then the band gap change from 1.55 electron volt to 1.77 electron volt. So, basically if we replace the lead with tin we get a, a material which a low band gap material which can absorb in the near IR range. So, tin should be preferred, but the problem with the tin based compound is that it is not very stable. It makes oxide at the ambient temperatures and become very very unstable. That is why like you know tin based compound although has a lower band gap. So, it is not very useful for fabricating high efficiency device. As we mentioned earlier that the efficiency in a solar cell is a product function. It depends upon so many parameters. It depends upon exciton generation, it depends upon exciton diffusion, it depends on exciton dissociation as well as charge carrier extraction. Now, if one of this process is get suffered or if the morphology of the device is not good, if the photophysics of the device is not good, if the stability of the device is not good, even other parameters are optimum, then the efficiency should be as small as possible. So, one should optimize or one should try to figure out to while making a solar cell that the all the 4 or 5 parameters get optimized to a similar extent rather than optimizing one parameter to the ultimate and neglecting the other parameters. So, that is why even if you go from lead to tin, basically what you are gaining is the exciton generation because your band gap is now lower. But now the morphology becomes poor and because of this poor morphology, the stability of this device is very very pure. Now, if the device is very very poor in stability, then what is the practical purpose of using that device? So, that is why like you know the efficiency ultimately is not very promising or it is not very useful for making commercial product. This is an extensive graph which is showing how we can do the band gap tuning by changing the cation ratio and the halide ratio. For example, you see that this is MAPBI 3 which has a homo energy level at minus 5.43 and a lumo energy level of minus 3.88 with a band gap of 1.55 electron volt. It is a direct band gap semiconductor. If I go to MAPBBR 3, so what I have done here? I replace the iodine with the bromine. So, the positions of the homo and lumo level changes and the band gap increase to 2.3 electron volt. On the other hand, instead of replacing the anionic site, let us replace this cationic site MA. If you replace MA with a longer chain FA CH3 NH2 CH3 CH2 NH2, then the positions of the homo and lumo level, this is the homo level and this is the lumo level that also further changes and band gap decrease to 1.5 electron volt and the stability also increase. Okay. So, similarly, if you change the halogen ratio for the same compound FABBI 3, if you change the X or halogen ratio 
to 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 to 0 0.75 in a compound MAPB SNI3. You see that here we are taking a ratio instead of so what in this compound we are doing we are keeping the halide ion is the same and we are keeping the anionic side same. In these two cases we have changed the anionic side and we have changed the cationic side. Now we keep both of them same but we are changing now this part lead and SN changing the ratio and ratio we are changing from 0.25 to 0.5 to 0.75 and how does the band gap is changing 1.24 electron volt to 1.17 electron volt to 1.17 electron volt that is really becoming close and close to the silicon band gap. Even if you use a compound like MASNI3 I mentioned that the band gap of 1.3 electron volt can be achieved where this FA is the formalidian HC, HC and H2 2 plus where in the MA that was only 1 plus. So, what is the lesson we learned from this graph? So, either by changing this cationic site or by anionic site or by this metallic sites we can tune the band gap from 2.3 electron volt to all the way to 1.17 electron volt. This method is called the compositional mapping. So, only thing we have to keep in mind while we are changing this thing, we have to keep the tolerance factor so that ultimately we get a perovskite crystal structure. Either we have to get a orthorhombic or tetragonal or cubic structure. So, we need to have a perovskite crystal structure but we can change as long as we can get a 3D perovskite crystal structure and what the gain will get? The gain will get is in their efficiency number because the band gap tunes. If the band gap changes then the exciton generation efficiency also changes and that gives to the high efficiency solar cell. Now, one more things we will study today before we complete this part the electronic structure. The electronic properties of the perovskite compounds ABX3 are governed by BX heteropolar bond. The weak interaction and negligible overlap of electron orbitals between organic components and inorganic BX octahedra that is responsible for this. The A cation does not directly contribute towards electronic properties, but size can distortion of BX bonds. Thus, band structure are only slightly affected by change from MA to cesium A cations as a result of the size effect. For example, here you look at an inorganic perovskite, here you look at a hybrid perovskite. So, when you go from here to here, so basically what you observed is the orientational disorder and because of the orientational disorder, the electronic properties is also different. The electronic levels for hybrid perovskite consist of an antibonding hybrid state between the BS and XP orbitals that corresponds to VBM. A non-bonding hybrid state between BP and XP orbitals then determine the conduction band. The electronic states are however affected by substitution of the halide component such that a VB transition from 3P to 4P to 5P occurs for substitution of chlorine to bromine to iodine. So, when we change the anionic site basically the transition between the orbitals is also changing and that is the responsible for the electronic properties changing. For example, here the valence band maxima and conduction band maxima is showing here for the lead where you have S 1 p orbitals and the P b p orbitals. Now, the orbital arrangements in these two case one in the S orbital and another is the P orbital you see that that is way different in these two different geometry. Now, as I said that this perovskite material only within a few years of research starting from an efficiency of decent 3.8 percent it reached today to 22 percent and that numbers is increasing every day. So, this material has been not only used for solar cell, but also used for making light emitting diode, for making photo detectors, for making lasers. But in our course, we will learn about perovskite based solar cell. And today what we have learned that the perovskite has a crystal structure ABX3 and there are some excellent properties of the perovskite material like large absorption coefficient, tunable band gap, solution based synthesis approach and because of all these things the perovskite material is a choice of the preferred material for making solar cells. And another important aspect of the perovskite we have learned today is that by changing either the A cation or by X anion or by the M sites we can tune the band gap over a wide range keeping the absorption coefficient same. 
Because of that the optical properties of this material is very very tunable. Similarly, due to the overlap of the band the electronic properties is also tunable. And also this material shows a temperature dependent crystal structures. So, because of all these good good properties perovskite materials has been used extensively in fabricating the solar cell in, in diverse amount of geometry. In the next lecture we will learn about how to fabricate a simple perovskite solar cell or what are the components in a perovskite solar cell, what are the role of those components and how you can make a perovskite solar cell in the lab. For today's lecture although there are a lot of basic review paper and research papers are available online for example, like this science article this one or this physical review B article or the crystal engineering came or the JAX article. There are also some nice textbook which is also available on the organic perovskite solar cells which you can refer for the further study. Thank you very much.